we're praying that your, your word would reach down into our lives. It would find root in our hearts. And that when we walk out of here, we are better than when we came in. We love you so much. And everybody said? Amen. Hey, we've been in a series entitled Cold Turkey. Everybody say Cold Turkey. Cold, do you like cold, cold turkey, by the way? Yes? No? Maybe? All right. A couple of us. Cool. Um, we've been in this, this series called Cold Turkey, and we've been talking about four things that we need to quit. So four things that we just need to stop doing. Uh, I would encourage you, go back and listen to any of those messages uh, on our website. They were all awesome. I mean, we talked about anger that first week and how it's not worth getting e- even and just letting it go. We talked about um, worry and hurry and that correlation and how, uh, man, we have to ruthlessly eliminate hurry from our life. We talked about last week about fear and how God's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So if any of that interests you, you need to go back and watch those messages. But today, I want to talk to you from this one word. Are you ready? Ingratitude. Everybody say that. Say ingratitude. Ingratitude. That's what I want to talk about today. I believe it's something that we need to quit. I'm going to show you a picture right now. This man, Benjamin Franklin, once said that most people return small favors Acknowledge medium ones and repay greater ones with ingratitude. Yeah, he said that. He said that most people return small favors, acknowledge medium ones, and repay greater ones with ingratitude. Unfortunately, I do believe that, that he was right, man. I, I think that ingratitude's everywhere. Uh, I don't like ingratitude. That's a pet peeve of mine. Um, even in my own self, when I feel that uh, I've displayed ingratitude, man, I don't like that at all. Let me give it to you like this. Ingratitude is this, and if you're taking notes, go ahead and write this down. If you're not taking notes, write this down. Uh, <laughs> here's the ingratitude. Um, forgetfulness of or poor return for kindness received. That's what this is. For, uh, ingratitude is the forgetfulness of or poor return for kindness received. I think Benjamin Franklin was right. There, there's a lot of ingratitude going around. And, and again, it's in all of us at some point, whether we care to admit it, whether we want to admit it or not, it's there. All of us probably have displayed that at one point or another. I saw this played out in my life not too long ago. Um, it was interesting. I went to the grocery store with my son, Nehemiah. He's four years old. Uh, he's on the front row. But uh, my son, we went to the grocery store, and I was doing my thing, and I was, I was in my aisle. You know, and you know, there's like imaginary lines in the aisle, right? Like or lanes, you know, you just, you know, you try not to cross over and stuff like that. So I was in, I was to the side, and I was kind of looking to see what I would buy. And then my son, just, just being a, like any four-year-old, you know, he kind of stepped out in the middle of, middle of the aisle, just kind of blocking it and not really meaning anything. He's just doing it, right? They just do that. And so then there was a lady. Now this lady proceeds to walk down our aisle. And so I said, you know what? I want to be nice. I'm going to anticipate her arrival to my area of this aisle and I'm going to move my son. And I said, you know, Nehemiah, come on, let's move over to this side, buddy. And he did. Now, here's where it gets interesting. As she came down the aisle, I made eye contact with her, you know, and I gave her like a little smile. And I was anticipating her saying something to me. And she didn't. So she kept going. She just kept going, kept going, kept going. And she didn't. Now, from where I'm from and the way I was raised, when someone does something kind for you, you say, come on, when somebody does something kind for you, you say, yes, I love that. Whoever screamed that, you are awesome. Yes. Oh, that was you. What's up? All right. So I'm just like, okay, she didn't say anything. And you guys have to pray for me. I am a pastor on staff here, but... But you have to pray for me because in that moment, yo, I was not feeling like a pastor. I wanted to say to this lady, um, lady, um, the words that you're tripping over is thank you. you. Yeah, I wanted to say that. I wanted to say, lady, listen, when someone does something kind for you, you say yes, you use some manners. I don't know where you were raised, lady, but, and actually I should probably pause. And, And if you're watching me online, lady, and you're there and you notice me, I'm sorry. I was... In my head, I was mad at you. But anyway, I I was just like, yo, when someone does something good for you, you say thank you. And I did that. I didn't have to. I mean, I could have let her just swerve around my son. I could have just, but, but, you know, okay. Anyway, enough of that. You get it. The ingratitude is everywhere. And it it really does. It steals your joy, right? When ingratitude is shown toward you, it steals your joy. I mean, it puts you in a bad mood. I was mad. I'm like, lady, oh, I want to fight you, but I can't. Because ingratitude, it hurts. So check this out. I want to take us to a place in Scripture 
uh, that I think will help us out. We're going to go to this morning to Luke chapter 17. And so as you're doing that, I hope that my whole time today really encapsulates this thought. I hope that all of us today walk out of here saying this sentence right here. Today, I'm quitting in gratitude. Everybody say that. Say, today... I'm quitting in gratitude. You guys are awesome. I love this service. So today, this is my whole goal as I push us to the point where we're saying this. We're saying today, I'm quitting in gratitude. So we find ourselves now in the book of Luke. Now, if you're new to church or new to the Bible, the book of Luke is one of four uh, books that we call the Gospels. Everybody say the Gospels. That's right. And what the Gospels do is really they chronicle the life of Jesus. And so his everything, his works, his ministry, um, his parables, things like that, the teachings of Jesus, um, that's what we're going to jump into. There's, there's something that happened that I want to show you. And so it's awesome. And they're all from a different perspective, which is really cool, because just like you and I, if we were to watch the same event, we'd have two separate um, ideas of what happened, two separate witness accounts. And so uh, we're going to drop into to, uh, Luke to hear what he has to say about Jesus. Here we go. In Luke 17, 11, says this. It says, now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy. Everybody say leprosy. leprosy. 10 men who had leprosy. We're going to come back to that. Met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, master, have pity on us. Some translations say have mercy on us. Everybody say mercy mercy. Then it says, when he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And oh, by the way, he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, we're not all 10 cleansed? Where are the other nine at? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go, your faith has made you well. Today, again, for the next few minutes, I just want to talk to you about ingratitude. And really specifically, I want to answer this question, how do I quit ingratitude? How do we quit this? How do we stop ingratitude, this forgetfulness of or poor return for a kindness received? How do I quit that in my life? In my life? Here we go. Number one is this. It's use your voice. Everybody say use your voice. Use your voice. There's two instances in this scripture where Luke says the uh, two words back to back. And I think you'll, you'll find that there's something here we can grab a hold of. So here it is. Verse 13, it said that they called out in a loud voice. Everybody say a loud voice. Loud, loud voice. Jesus, master, have pity on us. So let's st- this is the first time they cry out in a loud voice. Here's what they said. They said, Jesus. They said, Jesus. So they must have known who Jesus was. Or they must have heard of the things that Jesus had done because they didn't just say, hey, you over there. Or they didn't just say, hey, if anybody over there can hear me, um, come on. No, no, no. They answer, they called Jesus by his name. So there's something that they knew something about Jesus. But then they didn't stop at that. They didn't say Jesus or Savior. They, They didn't stop there. They said, Master. Now, you do know what a master is, right? A master is somebody that you say, they say the word, you do it, right? Right? Their wish is your command. And so they say, Jesus, so in other words, Savior, master, tell me what to do and I'll do it. Have pity on us or mercy. Everybody, one more time, say mercy. This is an interesting concept sometimes, that mercy, this word. We often hear it uh, paired with another word, uh, which is grace. And so I want to show you that to you. Uh, here it is, grace and mercy. So I just want to explain to, the, to us what this is because I think there's something so powerful in this. Grace is you getting what you don't deserve. As a matter of fact, the Bible goes on to say that it's by grace that you've been saved. In other words, we've all been saved. Those of us that are followers of Jesus, we've been saved um, by something that God gave to us that we didn't deserve. Have you ever been a recipient of God's grace? Can you just raise your hand? <laughs> There's been some times that you've needed God's grace and you didn't deserve it, but he still gave it to you. Can I hear a good amen? amen? There it is. There's grace. God giving you something that you don't deserve. But then mercy is, it's, it's a little bit different, but it's still powerful. Mercy is God withholding that which you do deserve. I know that I've been a recipient of God's mercy. In other words, I found myself in positions where there's a consequence that I should get, but I don't get because of God's mercy. Have you ever been in a situation where you've gotten God's mercy? Can I hear a good amen? 
Because God's infinite mercy, it goes so far to hold back certain things that, that we actually do deserve, but God doesn't. Man, it's his mercy that wakes us up in the morning. It's his mercy that keeps us out of harm way, harm's way. There are times in my life I know that I've um, stepped out or uh, I've done something wrong or I thought something wrong. I've, I've stepped out of God's grace. I, I've trespassed in some sort of way, and God and his mercy has saved me. One more time, are you glad for God's mercy that you don't always get what you do deserve? Man, I think it's so powerful. So they said, hey, would you have mercy on us? I grew up in church, and I remember uh, them always singing a song, uh, and it said, morning by morning, new mercies I see. There was a line of a song that said, morning by morning, new mercies I see. So there was something special about when we wake up in the morning, man, God is not only giving to us what we deserve, but then he's on the defense for us, and he's holding back that which we do deserve. Man, I'm so thankful for God's mercy. But anyway, that's the first time that we see that loud voice. It's when they needed something. Check this out. The second time we see this, these two words together, loud voice, is when one of them, when he saw he was healed, came back Praising God in a loud voice. So in other words, when they needed something and they needed a miracle and they needed God's mercy, they cried out in a loud voice. But when they got that and God came through for them, they also, this guy comes back and in that same volume, with that same volume, he gives praise and thanks to God. So here's what I'm saying simply is this, that using our voice helps us quit in gratitude. Using our voice helps us quit and gratitude. Here's the deal. I think that sometimes we, um, we use our voice in the wrong way. There's a lot of times where our voice, uh, man, they, we speak out too quickly or something like that. And a lot of times our voice is what ends up hurting us. But here's what I want to suggest. And I want us to take a, a real look at this because this hit, this hit me hard this week. I think that so oftentimes we're quick to blame God for the bad, but we're slow to thank him for the good. I think we're very quick to blame God for the bad around us, but then we're slow to thank him for the good. When a natural disaster strikes, uh, the common response that I hear or I'll hear from time to time is people saying, God, where are you in all this? God, what are you doing? God, do you not see what's going on? When there's a school shooting, I mean, that's the first thought is, God, what is going on? What are you doing? Don't you see? And we're quick to blame God for the bad, but then what happens? Why is it that when something good happens, when, when, when kindness is shown to us, when God demonstrates his love and his faithfulness and his goodness towards us, we're slow to thank him for it? Why is that? Why is it that we are like that? So I'm just suggesting that we should all, that with the same volume that we would blame God for something, with that same volume, we should also bless God. We should also thank God. We should also praise God with that same volume. I told our students on uh, Wednesday night here that in everything, we should always give thanks. We should use our voice to give thanks. Because here's what I know. If something's big enough to complain about, that it's also big enough to give thanks for. Let me say that again. If there's something in our lives, it doesn't matter what it is, even if it's small, if, it's, if there's something to complain about, if it's big enough for that, then it's also big enough for us to give thanks for. I told our students on Wednesday night, I said, listen, even if your shoes that seem minute, if your shoes fit and they're comfortable, you should be thankful for that. Because here's what I know. If they weren't comfortable and they didn't fit, you'd be complaining about it. No? So, if it's big enough for us to complain about, man, it should be big enough for us to give thanks and praise to God. Are you thankful for God's faithfulness in your life? Are you thankful for that today? God is awesome and he's amazing. And so, man, this, this whole thing, it's critical. So here's the deal. Last thing, and we're moving on. I want to teach you a, a slang phrase that we say sometimes. And I say we by just, I don't know, people who speak in slang lingo. Check this out. Uh, keep that same energy. Everybody say this. Keep that same energy. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever heard it? Raise your hand if you've ever heard this. this. Okay, we're going to teach a lot of people. All right, so check it out. So if there's a situation in life to which you bring me conflict or something, you, you come at me huffing and puffing for whatever reason, and then if I come back at you and meet you with that same energy, and then you begin to cower down, I would say to you, no, 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 keep that same energy. Because if you can give it, then you got to be able to take it, right? Um, you got to keep that same energy. A lot of times, what I hear is, even in sports, a lot of times a famous athlete will begin to start their career in the league and critics will come out of nowhere and they'll say he's not this and he's too this and he can't do that and all of those things 
And then when this, this athlete becomes prominent and they begin to do those things, they'll reply back and they'll say, no, 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 keep that same energy. You can't just go from a critic to now my number one fan. It just doesn't work like that. And so I would say that we should, even in our spiritual life, keep the same energy. Man, if we can cry out to God in our time of dire need and our, our biggest need, when he comes through for us, we can also thank him in a lot of ways. Can you say Amen. I'm just asking that we all just keep that same energy, that we're not just quick to blame God for the bad and slow to thank him for the good, but man, we're, maybe if we do slip up and we're quick to blame him for the bad, we're right there when we see God's faithfulness and his goodness. Can you say amen one more time? So I'm suggesting that number one, the way that you quit in gratitude is using your voice. Number two is check this out. Break the norm. Everybody say break the norm. Break the norm. Here's the deal. There are two instances in our passage, passage that we read today where the norms were broken. The first time was this. Check this out. It says, when he, and this is talking about Jesus, when he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Now, this is breaking the norm because when you had leprosy, you couldn't be around anybody. Leprosy was a skin condition that was not good. I mean, it was, it was not good on any level. I mean, on your physical level, it was horrible. You could have sores and boils and things like that. Your nerves would, would, would die off. And so, therefore, you could, uh, man, you could lose limbs and lose fingers, toes, things like that. It wasn't good physically, but it also wasn't good socially because since you were contagious, you had to stay away from everybody else. So, there is no way. Everybody say, no way. There's no, excuse me. There's no way that this man, I'm over here, sorry, y'all. Anyway, there's no way that this man should have went to the priest in his leprous condition. But what Jesus knew is that if they followed his word, because remember, they called him master. They said, you tell us what to do, we'll do it. Jesus said, okay, go show yourselves to the priest. Jesus knew that on their way, they would be healed. Jesus knew that on their way to get where they were going, by the time they got there, their condition would change. But they had to break out of the norm. They had to break out their norm and follow the word of Jesus. Even if they were currently in that condition, they had to just know we have to follow his word. And it did work out for them. Here's the second, the second way in here that the norms are broken. It says that he, being that, 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 um, the Samaritan that came back to say thanks, he threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Now here's the deal. This norm was broken because Samaritans do not associate themselves with Jews. It's like the bloods and the crypts up in here. Like it was just like they just don't, they don't mess with each other. It was funny at first service. But anyway, um, you know, they just don't mess with each other. They don't mesh. There were cultural and ethnic differences. And so to throw yourself at the feet of anybody uh, is a sign of submission. But be it a Jew and you are a Samaritan? No, homie, we don't do that. But this man breaks the norms because God has been so good. So here's what I'm saying. I'm saying that breaking the norms helps us quit in gratitude. Breaking the norms helps us quit in gratitude. What do I mean by that? Here's what I mean. In our life, where are there areas that you need to step out of what's comfortable for you to say thank you? One more time. Let's practice that phrase, thank you. Thank you. Where are those areas that we need to do that? Man, I, I think that in our life, there's a lot of times where we can say thank you to people and we can express gratitude. And maybe it causes us to be a little uncharacteristic. Maybe you're sitting there and someone does something for you and you think, oh, man, this is the way I would love to return this gratitude. Uh, you should do it. Like, even if it doesn't sound like it's normal to you, even if it sounds like, hey, this is not my normal way of, of saying thank you, but I feel like I should, you should do it anyway. We should never leave a thank you unsaid. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because like this man, this man, check this out. This man, the Bible says that he praised God and he thanked Jesus. So he praises God, but he thanks the one that God uses. He praises God and he thanks the one that God uses. All of us should express gratitude to the people that God uses in our life. There are people that come into our life and God uses them in extraordinary ways. And so it's our responsibility to say thank you and to show that gratitude. It's not enough that you just think it. It's not enough that we just feel it. We have to express it. Check this out. Unexpressed gratitude communicates ingratitude. It's not enough for us to just think it. You may be thinking, man, that was so awesome, man. I, my heart is saying, uh, man, thank you to them. My heart is just overwhelmed with joy. That's great, but we need to go that extra step and express it because unexpressed gratitude, though you may be feeling it, without it being expressed, it communicates ingratitude. And so these guys, they had to do that. 
I say that again. They had to, they came, this man came back. He praised God and then he thanked the one that God uses. Who in your life today that you need to thank because God is using them in some capacity? I told our students a couple weeks ago, I told them, uh, after I was done teaching, uh, we made them split up into small groups and we made them write thank you notes to somebody in their life that's made an impact. Because it's not enough to just say, oh, this person's made an impact or just feel it. No, no, no. You have to express it. There's something about breaking out of the normal routine and expressing that thank you. And so, uh, man, I, I was excited to see them do that because we don't do that often. But, man, we have to do that. We have to learn how to express that gratitude. Are you hearing what I'm saying today, church? It's just, a, it's just, it's, it's a powerful thing if we'll grab hold of it. So first and foremost, you got to use your voice. Secondly, you have to break out of the norms. Third is this right here. You got to remember God's goodness. You have to remember God's goodness. Listen, scripture doesn't tell me the rest of the story. We don't know 10 years and, and 20 years and 30 years after this moment what this guy's life was like. But I know one thing, he wasn't a leper anymore. That one moment, he could always cross it on the calendar and say, this was the day that God showed me his faithfulness. Because remember, when you have leprosy, you can't be around family. You can't be around friends. You're just off by yourself or with other lepers. So what I do know is now that this guy is able to return home and kiss his kids goodnight. He's able to hang out with his wife now. He's able to be returned back to, uh, to society. And he always had a date on the calendar that he could say, on this day, God showed me his goodness. There was always kind of like this landmark. He could always remember. I don't know if he went back to the, to, the, uh, to the marketplace and interviewed for five jobs and didn't get any of them. I don't know. But even in that situation, he could say, you know what? At least I'm not a leper. Man, even if he was having a bad day and everything wasn't seeming to go his way and life seemed to be going here and there and everywhere, he could still stop himself and say, you know what? At least I can live in society. On this day, God showed me his goodness. Man, for all of us, I think this scripture needs to really be like tattooed on our brain. Here it is right here. First Chronicles 16, 34. Give thanks to the Lord for he is, come on, for he is he is good. His love endures forever. Remembering God's goodness helps us quit in gratitude. When we're tempted to not be grateful or thankful for something, man, we ought to remember the time that God was good. Has God been good to anybody in here? Because <laughs> since, since somebody raised their hand and just said, God has been awesome to me. He has. He's been so good to us. And we ought to remember that. We ought to recall that to our mind told you I was a church boy growing up and there was always a, there was a song that they, they used to sing and I'll never forget it. It always to me communicated deep gratitude. They said that if God doesn't do another thing for me he's already done enough. I don't know about you. I hope God keeps doing things in my life and I believe he will because that's his character. But even if he doesn't, he's done enough. Man, because I can wake up this morning I can stand on my own strength, he's done enough. Man, even if I don't get that promotion in my life, or even if I don't get X, Y, and Z, whatever your situation may be, he's already done enough. And for that, I will remember his goodness. Can you say amen? The Bible says to give thanks to the Lord because he is good. Even when life seems bad, he is. Even when things aren't going your way, he is. He is good. And I want to close down today with telling you a couple things. First of all, on just a physical level, I read something this week. It was amazing. It was an article. It was a research that was done by University of California at Los Angeles. And they, they literally found out that your brain is rewired when you practice gratitude. And so as we're walking away, man, what are some, well, how can I apply this to my life? Man, I, I don't know. Maybe you should take a day every, every day this week and just begin the day by writing out what you're thankful for, what you're grateful for. They found it literally rewires your brain. There are stressors in life that won't stress you out as much when you start the day by rewiring your brain, being grateful for all that you have. They found that you live healthier and happier when we start the day giving thanks. So I would encourage you to, man, do that. I, I need to do that in my own life and just remind myself of how good God has been. Really will close after this, but I, I read a story too this week. And famous Bible commentator, a famous Bible theologian one night was robbed. And they took his wallet. And so he was at home, obviously still shaken up. But he said, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some time. And I'm going to think about what is the good in this situation. And so he came up with these things. He said, number one, they took my wallet, but they didn't take my life. And for that, I'm thankful. He said, number two, they took my wallet, but you know what? I didn't have a lot of money in there anyway, so they didn't really take a lot. 
He said, you know, I'm thankful also that I'm the one that got robbed. I'm not doing the robbing. Because he said, I don't know what's driving this guy to this point to where he's going to do this. And then he's probably going to get caught. and It's just going to be bad. So I'm just thankful that I'm in my right mind. Man, I thought that was awesome. All the things, even in a bad situation, that you can be thankful for. Let's bow our heads and pray. God, we love you so much. And we know that in this dark world, it's your light, that it's your word that really gives us light. And so today, we're thankful for your word. God, my prayer for each and every person is that we would use our voice the right way. That with the same energy that we can complain and, and grumble and things like that, we would use that same energy to praise you and thank you for the good. God, I'm also praying that we would break out of what it seems normal to us to give thanks to those that you use. We'll praise you, Jesus, because you're worthy and you're awesome and you're amazing and you're God. And so we'll praise you, but we'll also thank those around us whom you use. Also, God, my prayer is for all of us that we would call to mind your goodness. We just read it, 1 Chronicles 16, 34. Give thanks to the Lord because you are good. God, I thank you that you are good. Even when I don't know it, you're good. Even when I don't understand it, you're good. When life seems to be flipped upside down, you are good. So I speak that over our people. God, I speak that over our week, that we would remember this. We would quit in gratitude. And with our lives, we would celebrate you to all those who see us.